Well, it's not the Matrix, but it is a virtual world where players make real money. Michelle Caruso Cabrera on the money with how one game may change the way we all do business. It's a world virtually unlike any other. Second Life is an online world that is really the answer to the question, what if we could use computers to simulate the whole world? It's been likened to, I guess, the 3D World Wide Web and, and sort of being in sort of the same position that uh, the Internet was in about 1994. Second Life, an online interactive game, is the brainchild of San Francisco-based Linden Lab. Launched three years ago, today there are more than 160,000 users. It's a simulation running on a couple of thousand servers at this point. So in real world terms, that translates to a place that's about the size of Boston. Uh, it's about 30,000 acres at this point, and of course growing very rapidly. But what makes this virtual experience different from any other is that the players are responsible for all of the game's content, from building their homes to clothing their characters. It's a feature that has created a real-world economy. Think of it as the Matrix without the evil machines. The total amount of goods and services that people are selling to each other in Second Life is currently about five million dollars U.S. a month. That's right, it's a game, but people use real money to buy things in it. And that's helped Jennifer Vatsa and Tim Allen pay their real-world bills. Jennifer has supplemented the family's income by opening a dress shop inside Second Life. All of a sudden it was like, <laughs> there were times I would just, be, my, my eyes would pop, I'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe like how many, you know, of this one dress I sold or you know, how much money I made this month, or I, I can't believe people are spending money on, on, on this stuff. For Tim, it was an opportunity to offer companies a better way of training their employees. We have started to use Second Life as a training platform for our new recruits. Um, we show them how we've built a virtual three-dimensional gas station within the world itself, and we use this to train our new recruits to show them how a gas station works under the asphalt. Allen also sees big companies jumping into this virtual world very soon, using it to advertise and develop new products. You could do rapid prototyping of uh, products out there and see an initial reaction for much less of the cost than it would uh, take to create actual prototypes in the real world. Or make a TV show a much more interactive experience. Imagine if they created a 3D version of the island at the center of Lost for their fans to explore. It could inspire a whole new level of television devotion. But much like the real world, the big money in Second Life is, you guessed it, real estate. And there's no bubble here. There are, you know, several hundred people doing things like real estate where this is their full-time job. One of the most famous land barons is uh, Anshay Chung, and uh, she's been making in excess of 100,000 U.S. dollars a year doing this with her husband. Second Life also provides colleges and hospitals a new way to teach everything from architecture, Second Life needs buildings after all, to solving medical problems. There are a large number now of universities who own land and or are teaching classes in Second Life. There's also been a simulator built called Brigadoon, which is for families that have a child with Asperger's syndrome, a social anxiety disorder, to help them learn how to be social from within the comfort of their own home. Whatever the application, Second Life is fast becoming the first place that many go for fun and profit. And it's only getting bigger. On the Money, Michelle Caruso Cabrera, CNBC. And when we come back on the money, the big bucks on